I was born in 1920. I was born in eastern Montana. It was a little place called Hillside, and all it had was a post office. There was no other buildings. The people that had the, had the post office had it in their homes. It was halfway between Miles City and Jordan in eastern Montana, and we lived closer to Miles City. And my cousin Walt lived with us, and I have a picture of the five of us on the horse. I have it in the Missoulian. I put it in about two years ago. We were on old text. My mother took the picture with a brownie camera. Oh, I must have been six or seven. I was a middle kid here. We went to a one-room schoolhouse. Our school was the closest uh, to our home. And since there was only three of, of us, my sisters and I going to school, and the other families in the neighborhood had seven or eight children, and the school teacher always roomed with us, boarded with us. And each teacher was there just one year in order to get her experience. And with all the students in the, in the class, we always knew, you know, we could, we could recite Longfellow's poem while the eighth graders was learning it when we were in the first grade. The other children were supposed to be doing their own lessons, but most of the time you listened to what some of the rest of them were doing too. But it, it was quite an education. The school teachers were usually young girls that probably had one year of normal school, and it's a school that where the young lady went after she graduated from high school and went into one year, and the, usually the normal school that they went to was at Dillon, Montana. A couple of them probably just graduated from high school. The inside of the classroom had rows of desks, I suppose about three rows of desks, and, and it was an unusual school. In fact, all of the windows were on one side of the building, and it had an entryway. One end of the, uh, of the room had a great big pot-bellied stove. The teachers had to start their own stove. And it was, they usually had coal there for the teachers to start the fire. The teacher's desk was at the furthest end of the room, and they had the American flag. We saluted the flag every morning before class started. The one side of the building had the blackboards, and I remember that above the blackboards, there were strips of the ABCs and a large A and a small A, and penmanship was in, in included in the class, and it was quite important to have that for our writing. Probably the studies that we had were probably geography and, and math, of course, and, uh, and reading. Of course, the teacher decided that that since I was one of the smarter children, that I should skip the sixth grade. So that held me back in math for the rest of my life because I didn't ever learn fractions. The teachers seemed to have full control over the children. The teacher had all the chores to do herself. The chores that the teachers gave us was if you were especially good, you were allowed to, to erase the blackboard and clean the erasers. Most of the children walked. We were only a mile away from the school. In the wintertime, our dad took us in on a sled, and we had, for the first 
year when we were littler, we he would hook up old Maud on a on a big sled, and and uh, for warmth those days, in the really cold weather, they heated large rocks, and put those in the sled, and put us in there close to that, and then he would throw a tarp over the entire three children and the school teacher, and drive old Maud up to the school. Maud was a big, dependable horse. And uh, so that was her job. She didn't need any help. In our school, they would have um, a social about once a year. And that would be to for the school to purchase a flag or to, they would have a box lunch and so that they could raffle off the the lunch box and whoever would get that enough money that's what they used when they bought the books for the school or would buy something that they thought they needed i think that uh, one of the first school teachers probably the second grade teacher that i had was quite uh, fashionable and they wore their skirts pretty short in the 1920s and but and they were made out of pretty material they had uh, bloomers to showed under the dresses to show that they were so pretty too but my mother did the sewing for all of us and those days they had the flour sacks and the sugar sacks the women used them for sewing so our clothes were made out of the flour sacks and the mother's aprons were all made out of out of the flour sacks and every woman had an apron on of course then if you saw you had company coming you hurried up and grabbed an apron in case you had spilled something on your dress for the sports for the families there weren't enough children for, to have a team most of the children had to be right to school and right home because they had an ample amount of work to do when they got home. I did like to read when I was a kid. And uh, they always called me the finish the chapter kid. My mother, you know, would expect me to help with the dishes and I would say, oh please, I need to finish this chapter. So I got out of quite a bit of work that way. Probably the favorite authors that I had those days were probably Zane Grey books. Zane Grey books are Western. I think they're a collector's item now. But that was uh, one of my favorite books. We had some close friends that were six miles south of us, and we got together with them more than we did the other neighbors. And uh, they had a daughter that was my age, and we've remained friends for probably 80 years. I found this booklet, I have it, and it was for Lydia, my mother, Lydia Gall, and it was in a Decker school, Thompson Township, Campbell County, South Dakota. The term was 1904 and 5. The pupils, there were four Decker children, five Decker children, no, six Decker children. Boy, that was a big family. With my mother's, there was Richard Namel and Fred Gall. Seven Gall children in this, in this little book. Now, I have two or three of the books that I have. Complimentary. With the little sayings, at school's close, and give your best. This one has four Bickle kids and seven Gall kids, and two Johnson kids, and I was one of them. Laura was the other. I think I have one more of these books. If we meet again, we'll smile indeed. If not, tis true this parting was well made.